Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. Um, today we have a special guest, Evangelist Tabitha Stroller. Okay, so here she is. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm blessed. Amen. So am I. Thank you, um, Brother Emmanuel, for allowing me to be a guest on your podcast this evening. And just to share a few kind words that God has given me. So um, I ask your audience for those that can um, and will to share this broadcast. I, I'm still not picking it up, oh, but that's Lord, okay. I'm... We're going to move on forward with what God has for us to do and say this day. And yes. so, Brother Emmanuel, why... Um, while I'm speaking, then, you know, you can look and see which page is on and you can go ahead and share it out that way. Okay. Thank you. Amen. So you. Um, let today we're going to talk about persistent faith. We're going to talk about persistent faith today. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we know that in today's society, it's very easy. It's extremely easy to walk away from it all. When I say walk away from it all, it's easy for us to walk away from family. It's easy for us to walk away from friends. It's easy for us to walk away from our jobs. Why? Because there is so much happening all around us. On the internet, it's body shaming all over the internet. Um, vacations with so-called friends end up in tragedy. Amen? Amen. McDonald's is paying way more than some of our factories and jobs that are supposed to be providing living wages. But today we're talking about persistent faith. See, Google describes or defines persistent as continuing firmly or um, in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Amen. So therefore, persistent or persistence is often linked with endurance. Amen. So we know that when we endure, we have to go through some things. When we endure, um, trials and tribulations are going to come up, but that's okay because God is who he is. Amen. So persistent in the Bible means or the meaning of endurance in the Bible is getting through the trial without compromising or waving or wavering. So if we are persistent in our faith and it has a little to do with endurance, it lets us know that we're going to go through some things, but through God and because of who he is, then we're going to be all right. As long as we go through and don't stop, but go through, don't compromise. Amen. And don't waver. So I know life can throw us, some fastballs. Life can throw us some curveballs, but I come to encourage all of us today to move forward in persistent faith. Just like the woman that is recorded in Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34. And I know you may be a little familiar with the scripture, but we're going to read it again. And some she's referred to a lot of times as the woman with the issue of blood. It's a parable. Amen. So these verses read, Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 25, and this is the New International Version. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, glory to God, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. 
He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with this scripture today, with this fam, with <coughs> message today, talking about persistent faith, we've got to be persistent. Amen. And um, as we're going forward, there are comments over here. So if anyone is tuning in, make sure you um, comment in the comments, not the private chat, but the comments. The private chat is just for um, Brother Barbie and myself. But you come in in the comments and let us know that you are there. If you are there, let us know that you are there. Amen. Amen. So like the woman with the issue of blood that's recorded in Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 25 that we just read. This woman had a reason to give up for the Bible states that she had an issue of blood for 12 years. These days, we don't want to have an issue, a problem or a situation for 12 minutes, let alone 12 hours. Now, can you imagine 12 years? And due to this hemorrhaging that she had, um, it's recorded in in uh, Leviticus, the 15th chapter, that due to the hemorrhaging that she had and the blood flow, the suffering and all of this, she was unclean. Now, being unclean, means that she could not even go to the temple to worship. She could not be in crowds. She could not be around her family. She could not do just some of the simple things that we like to do. So can you imagine being without your family and friends, being without company for 12 long years? I know that we've just gotten over COVID and I know some of us raising my hand, enjoyed being able to be at home, enjoyed not having to be on the lookout every time you turn around for something else to do. So sometimes we ask for a rest and God would do that. But here she had, she was called unclean. Can you imagine that every time you go out, people looking at you like you are nasty and something wrong with you and pointing and laughing. Those are some of the things that she would have had to deal with. But instead of looking at her condition or her issue today, we're going to look at her faith persistent faith that is now i don't know who needs to hear this besides me today but i want you to know that god will will reward your faith he will reward your persistent faith if you don't believe me look at the woman in luke 18 beginning at the first verse the widow woman that's the parable there that's um that is recorded in luke and in that parable glory to god the king the judge may not have feared god but that woman did the judge may not have feared man but that woman knew that if she kept going if she kept asking something would happen and sure enough it did so god rewards hallelujah persistence persistent faith. So the first thing that I want you to know tonight or get from this message is that we have to persist through our pain. We have to move forward in persistent faith, even when we are hurt. This woman had an issue for 12 long years. The type of hemorrhaging that it talks about in the Bible that she had, she would have been bleeding and not just lightly, but bleeding heavy for 12 years. She would have had pain. She would have not felt good. At times, she wouldn't have been able to eat. So she endured all of this for 12 years. Let me let you know something. You may be going through a trial right now that have may only been for three years. It might have only been for a year. It might only might only be for 30 minutes. But I encourage you today, my brothers and my sisters, to keep moving forward in your faith. Don't stop, but keep moving forward. You have to be persistent. You can't waver and you can't compromise because I want you to know that at the end, there truly is a prize. In this life, we can't give up. In this life, we can't stop. We have to move forward in our faith. So persist through the pain, the pain of someone not caring for you like you care for them, the pain of mothers losing their children, the pain of fathers losing their wives and the wives uh, losing their husbands, whatever pain you might be going through today, be persistent in your faith. Continue to call on the name of the Lord because God is, hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh. Glory to God. He is our great provider. He will give you what it is that you need. He is our Lord of peace. Hallelujah. So be persistent. He is a God that heals. Hallelujah. 
Glory to your name, God. The next thing that I want us to see in here is that we need to persist through our drought. If you read the scripture like I just did, it lets us know that she, the Bible records that she had spent everything that she had trying to get well. She had a drought. Some of us might be going through financial droughts. Hallelujah. Some of us might be going through droughts where we don't have that relationship with people that we want to have that relationship with. There are different types of droughts in our life. But whatever drought that you're going through, I need you to go ahead and persist further in faith. Move just a little bit further in your faith. Don't stop. We have to keep moving. We have to persist, glory to God, because this lady had faith. Now, if anybody had a reason to give up, it was her. But she knew, she knew there was a healing for her. She knew that if she just kept moving forward, that she would be delivered. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. And lastly, we have to persist, hallelujah, with our approach. You see, because she had this condition, because she had been ostracized from her community, because she couldn't go into the temple, because she couldn't be around a lot of people. In order, when she heard Jesus was passing by, in order for her to get close to him, she had to do a sneak attack. Amen. So that's what she did. She came from behind him and she said, I don't have to touch him. I don't have to talk to him, but I believe that he has the power to do what it is that I need done. So she just reached out. She was crawling through the crowds. She was crawling through just in order to touch the hem of his garment. And when she did, I am so glad that I have a father that cares about me. I am so glad that I have a father who is not like man. Hallelujah. I am so glad that when I reach out to touch Jesus, he is there. And I am so glad that he has the power to do all things but fail. God, I thank you today. Because in her persistent faith, when she reached out and touched him, glory to God, she felt it immediately. The blood dried up immediately. She was healed immediately. Hallelujah. So how many of us today need God to do something for us? How many of us need a healing today? How many of us need a deliverance today? How many of us need a financial breakthrough today? How many of us have been waiting for that opportunity, glory to God, to make it to the next level? And we just don't know what to do. I I encourage you to persist in your faith because there is healing in your persistence. There's deliverance in your persistence. There is breakthrough in your persistence. There's unification in your persistence. There's restoration in your persistence today. Glory to God. So I encourage you to do just like this woman did. She persisted. She had faith and she persisted. Her faith, we know that faith is now faith, hallelujah, that's what the Bible says, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But she persisted because she didn't see God move yet, but she knew that he would. So my brothers and sisters, today as we pray, I pray that God will move on your behalf, that you just continue to move forward and don't stop because God has something waiting for you. There is something in your persistent faith. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. We come before you right now, God, giving you praise, glory, and honor. God, we thank you that you are God, and besides you, there is none other. God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you will do, all that you're doing right now. God, I thank you for, for your people today, Lord God. I know sometimes we get weary, Lord God, whether it's illness, whether it's, it's, it's a um, mental illness, whether it's a financial sickness, whether, God, it's a physical sickness. God, sometimes life just comes at us all types of ways. But God, I'm so glad that we can call on your name. I'm so glad that you're listening for the cry of your children, God. So we thank you today. Father, I pray for forgiveness of our sins, God, because we messed up. That's all to it. We messed up. We were disobedient, God. We didn't do what you told us to do. We didn't go where you told us to go, God. We won't even speak to our neighbor or help feed our brothers and sisters that are in need. Father God, we're supposed to be missionaries. Lord God, we're supposed to be looking after each other. And some of us don't want to do that. So God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you forgive us, Lord God, for all of our wrongdoing. Father God, I pray now that the um, 
this platform that brother Emmanuel has, Lord God. I pray connection with him right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will connect him with the right people, Father, that they will be able to help him, Lord God. Bring the people along on his team, Lord God, that means him well and have the same vision and drive for for his uh, ministry, Lord God. God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you for all of those who are pressing, all of those who are persisting in their faith. God, we lift up those right now who have not accepted you as their Lord and Savior. And I pray, Lord God, that as you stand at the door and knock, that they will open it and let you in. God, it's in the blessed and holy name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, is there anything else you want? Uh, oh, woman of God, can you please tell my listeners where they can find you? Oh, certainly. I am. Again, Evangelist Tabitha Struther. You can find me on social media at Talking with Tabitha. I am the host of Talking with Tabitha. Our new season will begin in August. I'm also the co-host on um, Table Talk Today on SoulWin.tv. So if you have not subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe to SoulWin, S-O-L-W-I-N dot TV. So um, subscribe today for that. And I am also a city council member here in the, as I said, the big city of Chester, South Carolina. And again, Brother Barbie, I graciously thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. No problem. And whenever you feel led about coming on, back on this show, you're more than welcome to do so, woman of God. Thank you. I would just want to ask you, can you just uh, bear with me for a moment? I want to um, say a couple announcements and then I want to pray and close it out. Yes, sir. All right. Great. Um, I do want my audience to um, please mark your calendar for next Thursday, March 26th, March 23rd. Uh, we're going to have a <coughs> Dr. Grace Thomas. She's going to come on at two o'clock American Central Time. Also, uh, next Saturday, we're going to, that'll be March 25th, we're going to be hosting our virtual conference. So um, I'm asking all of my Christian friends, especially in my Christian group, Light of the World Inspirational Group, as well as Christian Spoken Word Network to come forth. Uh, practice with me um, on StreamYard as well as on um, Zoom, because I want to make sure that we're going to uh, present a professional type of um, virtual podcast. So far, uh, my past podcast has all been um, audio. I want people to see us. And I want eventually for us to move from behind this computer. But I, again, I do thank God for this uh, technology. Um, the title of our or the theme is called Confronting um, Modern Issues in Christianity. So we're going to talk about that. So, but I am going to, uh, we have to practice first if you're serious about being on that panel. And also, I'm going to share with you um, about my speech, my perspective, and then for you to give commentary. And then after that, we're going to open it up for the um, general uh, public for Q&A. Um, I do want to encourage everyone that's um, watching to support me. All I want you to do is read my, uh, I'm having a hard time, my uh, revised book. This is called The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, um, second edition. This book is based on my life experience. It's also, um, it's, it talks about our past, present, as well as our future as uh, African-Americans. So that's very important that you would uh, please purchase this book first in order to realize the importance of the solution. And that is for us to, um, first of all, work together and for us to um, focus on the 21st century uh, solutions rather than just dwelling on the past and complaining about situations that's beyond our control. We're going to work on things that we can solve. And that, that is focusing on fixing the, the, the Black family. We want to bring in resources to help the Black family, starting here in the city of Chicago, as well as connect with our um, 
Af African immigrants here in the United States of America. We're calling upon them to come forward to work with us, as well as Afro-Caribbeans and Afro-Brazilians. So come work with us, help us rebuild the Black, the, uh, the African-American community. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to visit 10 African nations to make our presence known there, set up chapters there, as well as so we can do international trade with our brothers and sisters on the continent. The name of our Christian business is the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. That's the name of it. Over here, we're about raising the uh, standards, raising the bar, in other words. Over here, we're gonna separate ourselves from, I would say, degenerates, urban terrorists, hardened criminals, pedophiles, we don't want those type of people up in our business because why? Because one rotten apple will destroy a barrel of fresh apples. So you have to separate from the ones that's bad, the negative type of people. We want to connect with other like-minded people, black people. And we want to help, um, be self-sufficient and help ourselves. So that's all I'm trying to do. It's been a struggle. I've been paying for um I've been paying for the uh this title or yeah, this business title for the past 13 years. That's not cool. But I believe that this organization is going to come to fr fruitation. And so with that being said, um, Heavenly Father, I come before you as humble as I know how. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, again for um, the situation that I had to endure, Lord. The humiliation being overlooked, Lord. Um, the, the vision that, that you have given me, Lord, um, I have to step back and realize that the people that I've been reaching out to, they're not rejecting me. They're rejecting you because you're the one that gave me the vision in, in the first place. And anyway, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you again for this technology that I'm able to broadcast my vision at, beyond Chicago, Lord. And Heavenly Father, I'm asking you, Lord, to provide a, miracle, a 21st century miracle on my behalf, Lord. Um, I'm not doing this, Lord, to uh, be famous and um being all popular on online on the internet i want to move this christian business from behind a computer and take our christian business to the devil's strongholds and that's to me um the inner cities because it's overlooked and unnecessary uh killings and all those things we want to make our presence known there and help uh families that want more out of life that's what you called me to do and that's what I'm, I'm gonna do that, Lord, until you take me out the land of the living, Lord. But um, just please, Lord, all I'm asking you for, Lord, is a miracle. Bless me to get this film project fully funded and made, Lord. So that way um, it can reach the black masses. And that way, Lord Jesus, it can bring in capital for me to hire because I can't find volunteers really to work with me and that's fine. So anyhow, it'll put me in a better position financially where I can hire qualified black middle class professionals that's going to help um, this organization be effective and successful for years to come that can be passed down to the next generation. Yes, it's going to be a nonprofit, one portion of it, but it's also going to be a for profit. So that's all I'm trying to do, Lord. I'm trying my best, Heavenly Father. Thank you again for Sister Renee that's working with me behind the scenes. And again, Lord, ain't no shame, Lord. I read my speeches. People say I sound uh, monotone, but that's all right. I want to make sure that my listeners hear me loud and clear. That's bottom line. Also, I'm not running for public office. I'm trying to do something positive for my racial group here in America. 
and give our um, people options. They don't have to sit up here and be treated as third, fourth, and fifth class citizens, begging the, the white supremacist financial elites for freedom, justice, and equality. They've been doing that for 60 years. All I'm saying is give my ideas a chance. Work with me while I'm alive. Don't wait till I'm dead and gone to um, start talking about all this stuff that Emmanuel has been talking about. Let's, let's do it now. Let's do that right now. But again, it is what it is. And um, I thank you again, Lord Jesus Christ, again for this opportunity. Bless everyone, Lord, that's listening to this podcast. Again, touch their hearts and minds, Lord, to read the book. Because so many people I run across, they, they um, have that Willie Lynch mentality saying that this is a scam. It takes capital to start a business. That's why I wrote my book, In Order to Generate Capital. That's why I have my virtual store, In Order to Generate Capital. Instead of paying out of my pocket for this um, to secure this business title. But anyway, all I'm saying is, Lord, just bless me with the capital so I can do my job. And bless me, Lord, with qualified uh, black middle class professionals that's going to help work with me, Lord, as well as non black sympathizers. Touch their hearts to be a part of this as well. They could be a part of us. It's no problem. But all I'm saying is it's black people's responsibility to build this organization and to own it. We're going to use an Afrocentric perspective. That's all I'm saying. Jesus name, I pray. Amen. And thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity. And this is going to conclude our show for this evening. Amen. And.